please um, i request the band to play the national anthem May I request Professor Dr. V. C. Vivekanandan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Hidayatullah National Law University, to deliver the welcome address and present the report of university. Honorable Visitor of HNLU and Chief Guest for the seventh convocation of HNLU, Honorable Mr. Justice Anirudha Bose, Judge Supreme Court of India. Honorable Justice is an acclaimed jurist with a passion for academic endeavors. After having served as a judge at the Calcutta High Court, later as the Chief Justice of Jharkhand High Court, Justice Bose has, was elevated to the Supreme Court in 2019. He was nominated as the visitor of HNLU by Honorable Chief Justice of India in January 2023. As our visitor, we could approach him on all matters of guidance, which he readily responded and helped us. We are immensely happy to have him as our chief guest today. Sir, we welcome you to this solemn event and all are eager to listen to your address. We have with us Honorable Mr. Justice Prashant Kumar Mishra, Judge of Supreme Court, who has been associated with HNLU since its inception from 2003. Served as a judge with the High Court of Chhattisgarh, elevated as a Chief Justice of the High Court of Andhra Pradesh, and currently as the Judge of Supreme Court, we consider him as a friend, philosopher, and guide to HNLU. Sir, we are extremely delighted to have you in this convocation. Due to some urgent and unavoidable circumstances, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Sri Arun Sir, had to leave to Delhi, and he has conveyed his best wishes for this event today, and we'll be missing him, but sooner or later, we will have him in the campus. We are with us. Honorable Chancellor and Honorable Chief Justice of the High Court of Chhattisgarh, Honorable Mr. Justice Ramesh Sinha, hailing from the prestigious and largest court of India, the Allahabad High Court. His mentoring and guidance have been invaluable to us, and we extend a hearty welcome to him for conferring the degrees today. We are also honored to have with us Honorable Mr. S Mr. Sanjay K. Agarwal, Judge of the High Court of Chhattisgarh, Honorable Mr. Justice P. Sam Koshi, Judge of the High Court of Telangana, Honorable Justice Mr. Goda Raghuram, former Judge of the High Court of Andhra Pradesh with us today. We also have eminent academicians with us, notably Professor Dr. Anbir Singh, Pro-Chancellor of IILM University, Professor Dr. Venkat Rao, Vice-Chancellor of IIULER of Goa, Professor Dr. Paramjit Singh Jaswal, Vice Chancellor of SRM University, Sonepat, Professor Nista Jaswal, Vice Chancellor of HPNLU, Shimla, and Professor S. Shantakumar, Director of GNLU, Gandhinagar, to this event, and I welcome all of them. I would now like to turn to welcome the heroes of today's event. 
the graduating batch of 2023 and their proud parents and guardians. They have come here to witness a momentous occasion. A big welcome to all of you on behalf of faculty, staff, and students of HNLU. I also extend my welcome to the dignitaries present here, the media personnel, and all well-wishers of HNLU. Today is not just a special day of seventh convocation, but is also the 118th birth anniversary of late Honorable Mr. Justice Mohammad Idetullah, a great son and eminent jurist of this country on whose name the university was founded. There cannot be a more inspirational jurist than Honorable Mr. Justice Idetullah for those graduating today emulate in their career and future endeavors. Let me now turn on to present the progress report of HNLU 20, for 2023, which turned out to be a remarkable year with new benchmark set up by faculties and students in all fields of teaching, research, publication, and advocacy. Let me first begin with the accolades which HNLU received. HNLU received the Times Accent Human Resource Skill Development Leadership Award in February 2023 at the 31st World HRD Congress at Mumbai. HNLU also backed the Business World Magazine's Best Emerging Higher Institute of India Award 2023 in September. HNLU was again ranked in a row as the fifth among the national law schools by a popular survey of India Today rankings. Coming back to research, we launched the concept of RHAS or Research Hub and Spoke Model, a kind of umbrella research initiative among the Indian law schools. RHAS has five hubs of schools, which are School of Law and Technology, School of Law and Public Policy, School of Law and Humanities, School of Law and Business, and School of Law and Governance. Each hub with five centers of spokes will carry out research, advocacy, and contributing to teaching inputs. The RHAS units has completed already several conferences and also glad to inform you in two weeks back, the Finance Committee approved a total outlay of 1.25 crores for these five law schools to carry out research, which will put us among the top research law schools in the country in the coming days. To mention few initiatives of conferences linked with research, we had a one-day conference on women sexual health and choices in collaboration with National Commission for Women in March 2023. We completed an international conference on marine life and fisheries in March 2023. A round table on the title Chat GPT, beginning of the end of Juris Copyright, was held in April 2023. A panel discussion was organized on plastic pollution in June 2023. A national writing competition, essay writing, on One Ocean, One Climate, and One Future was held in July 2023. A national seminar centered on youth and democracy with the Y20 Secretariat of G20 was organized in August 2023. A panel discussion on tribal development and challenges in India was organized in August 23. A one-day conference on cyber security and cyber law was held in September 2023. A round table on delineating the issues in data protection in the digital world was held in September 23. A HEXA lecture on data protection, lessons from e US and EU by Tim Musan was done in October 23. A week-long online interdisciplinary FDP on enhancing teaching, learning, and research skills was conducted by the IQAC cell of HNLU in September 2023. An online national essay competition titled Is Law the Ultimate Science was held in October 2023. An online conference on climate action, SDGs, and trade was held in November 2023. National conference on empowering India's energy future, navigating the legal landscape was done in November 23. An international capacity building program and research summit on 75 years of multilateral trading system was held in December 2023. A one-day international conference on human rights in the contemporary world, prospects and challenges, commemorating the 75th 
edition of the World Human Rights Day was held in December 10, 2023. Apart from the research, one other thing which we are happy and proud to announce is the Distinguished Juris Professor program called HDJP. I am happy to share with this August audience the launch of HNLU Distinguished Juris program which brings jurists from bar, bench and academia to join us to share their experiential learning to the students by lectures and short-term courses. HNLU is fortunate to have the concern of the following jurists. Honorable Mr. Justice Deepak Mishra, former Chief Justice of India, has consented to be part of DJP. Honorable Mr. Justice U. U. Lalit, former Chief Justice of India, has consented to be part of this. Honorable Mr. Justice Deepak Gupta, former Judge of Supreme Court and former Chancellor of HNLU, has agreed to be part of this. Honorable Justice M. R. Shah, former Judge of Supreme Court of India, has consented to come over and lecture. Honorable Mr. Justice Arup Kumar Goswami, former Chief Justice of High Court of Chhattisgarh and former Chancellor, also has consented. Honorable Mr. Justice Raghuram, former Judge, High Court of Andhra Pradesh, who is here with us, has consented to be a DJP. Professor Dr. Upendra Bakshi, Emeritus Professor of Law of University of Warwick and Distinguished Professor from NLU Delhi, has also consented to be with us and he'll be visiting us sometime in the month of January to HNLU to deliver lectures. Apart from that, we have eminent lawyers, Sri R. Venkatramani, Learned Attorney General, Government of India, as part of this program. Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, Honorable Member of Rajya Sabha and Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Professor Ranbir Singh, Pro-Chancellor of IILM University. Professor Venkat Rao, Vice Chancellor of IIU LER. Professor Paramjit Jaswal, Vice Chancellor of SRM University. Professor Jos Varghese, Founding Vice Chancellor of HNLU. Professor Doc David Ambrose, Former Head of Legal Studies of Madras University. Professor M.K. Ramesh, former professor and vice chancellor in charge of NLSU Bangalore, Professor Subha Ghosh, Crandall Melvin, professor of law and director at Syracuse University, Professor Dr. Peter Yu, regents professor of law and communication, Center for Law of Intellectual Property of Texas A&M, Professor Dr. Irene Kaliboli, regents professor of law, Texas and AM, Professor Srividya Raghavan, professor of law and director of India programs, Texas A&M, are the academicians who are with us. Also, we, had, we have Sri Satish Chandra Bama, former Advocate General, who has consented to be a DJP, as well as Sri Kishore Baduri, Senior Advocate, High Court of Chhattisgarh, to be part of this, and Sri L. Ravichanda, Senior Counsel, High Court of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, he is part of this. Sri P.V.S. Girida, Senior Advocate, High Court of Madras and Senior Partner, to be pa as part of DJP and Dr. Malati Lakshmi Kumaran, Executive Director and Practice Head of Laksh Lakshmi Kumaran Sridhar and attorneys have been part of this. We b believe with all these people with a busy schedule in the starting from 24 should be a very great experiential learning for the, for the students. I'm pretty sure the graduating students would have missed, but you know, they are always welcome to be part of this lecture in the future. So, turning back to this year, 23, we had an orientation, which I call an orientation with an emotional quotient. We welcomed the new batch of 23 with a week-long orientation of a formal and informal program of icebreaking, which included musical night, sporting event, health talk, road safety, and movie screening, where the freshers as well as the faculty participated with such enthusiasm. The faculties and freshers bonded with each other for a five-year sojourn at the campus, which is a different kind, which normally is done in half a day. We thought it's a week-long thing. With the success, we'll be repeating it in the upcoming batches. Then coming to student-centric programs, HNLU had its second edition of the innovative program called HAAI, which is HNLU Academic Assistance and Internship, which was designed and uh, executed by Dr. Vipin Kumar, registrar in charge, engaging LLM and senior students of LLB at teaching assistance and also providing research opportunities at the university. HNLU also enhanced its vice chancellor means and merit scholarship to 24 meritorious students, but financially distressed 
across the LLB Honors Program and they are awarded scholarship covering 50% of the tuition fees. There are plans afoot to increase this much further in the coming year and also increase the amount of scholarship. On the campus front, the HNLU Health Shield program was expanded with the uh, insurance scheme which is already in place and also we upgraded the health infrastructure by adding two new state-of-the-art force advanced life support ambulances in the campus. Coming back to mooting, mooting is at its peak in HNLU. The flagship event of HNMCC has transformed itself to an international moot court competition now rechristened as HIMCC. It is all set to have its inaugural edition in March 2024 with a record price money of 6 lakhs. So far, it has been receiving encouraging response by teams from India and abroad and is all set to make it as a must-participate event for teams in India as well as abroad. Coming back to the infrastructure, we redesigned the Learner's Lounge in the first floor. We call it as Learner's Lounge 1 as part of the Learning Resource Center. We redesigned with a capacity of 200 seats which had a kind of private cubicles with privacy. Plans are afoot to change LL2 with a more reader-friendly infrastructure within few months. Another important event which is worth mentioning is the distinguished lecture delivered by Honorable Vice President of India. A significant milestone in this year was again the visit of Sri Jagdeep Dankar, the Honorable Vice President of India on December 3rd, 2023 to deliver a distinguished lecture on India's development and role of lawyers. The Honorable Vice President was gracious to facilitate for an MOU of HNLU with the Indian Council of World Affairs. The event was also graced by our Honorable Chancellor, Mr. Justice Ramayashinha, Chief Justice of High Court, in that event. Coming back to the digital at HNLU platform, this initiative has marked <coughs> significant milestones in various programs. The fourth season, I call it, of Sui Generis, the faculty seminar series, show cost the research interest of HNLU faculty members through 10 engaging presentations in the last semester. The Lex Osmos also entered the fifth season where industry leaders and practitioners conducted innovative courses like drafting and pleadings in courts, law and economics theory and application, law and practice regulating acquisition of listed companies, framing of legal issues in suits and arbitration proceedings, arbitration in reality, a simulated practitioner's perspective, and intellectual property issues in ICT were dealt, and we will be soon moving to the sixth season starting in February 24. Also, we had a platform called XRK, which is called Out of the Box. The XRK program had expert lecture series on the topics of digital age context of social justice, gendering IP on World IP Day, and competition law in the digital economy, a future roadmap of India. Moving back to publication, HNLU Press has been regularly clanking new books and journals. Edited book on the journey of seven decades of constitutional discourse at crossroads was released in Lost Convocation. The edited book on rights, nature and sustainability was done. And then HNLU Journal of Law and Social Sciences, 7th, 8th and 9th volume, is already done by HNLU Press. Also, it brought a report called A Study on Patent Opposition System. Today, HNLU Press, at the end of this program, will have the dignitaries releasing the HNLU Gazette, which is the inaugural issue of showcasing what is HNLU doing. And also, we will be coming out with a really creative calendar, which is called the HNLU calendar of 2024, which we have used very advanced AA analytics tool to make the calendar in-house by our own faculty. We did not go to any designer. We did it inside. So I need to tell you, faculty are advancing on AA analytics, and I do think that students will catch up. So this is some of the publication thing. Coming back to Legal Aid and Social Services Committee, it has been one of the busiest units of HNLU rolled out several programs. One day workshop on enhancing self-confidence was a program. Workshop on women's empowerment in Jashpur district. 
legal aid for a differently able was a program and then swachhata pakwada is another program workshop on mental health matters was one program awareness program on cancer was conducted and also they did the blood donation camp on the sports and cultural activities at chennai after a significant gap due to covid colossus was with a bang and colossus breached all earlier records with a staggering participation of 1000 students from 12 states participating in the three day extravaganza with a prize money of more than 3 lakhs the event can be rated and adjudged the best among the law universities in the country and it will be so in the future we presume coming back to faculty accomplishments about myself i got elected as the vice president of the consortium of national law universities in 2023 i also received a honorary mention in the forbes india legal power list of 2022 and a citation felicitated by the union minister for law and justice i presented a paper intellectual property as an engine for innovation how to implement a balanced approach in the innovation research asia conference held at nanyang technological university in singapore i also presented a paper ip and gender at the atrip conference in tokyo university also presented a paper in the world university summit of jindal global law school on the title beyond ranking matrix need for substantial reforms in educational governance if i move to some of my colleagues and i'm pretty sure i need part 2 edition of a convocation if i am going to complete all the names but i am just giving some important things here and many of these are with the you know uh, speech which has been printed and given professor uday shankar our former registrar he chaired a session titled focus talk on social basic minimum at the 8th max planck alumni association and early careers research symposium in berlin in july professor yogendra srivastava co-edited the book tribal transitions in india issues challenges and road ahead along with dr ayan azra and dr pankaj umbarkar dr papara published an article bank guarantee with special reference to exception 3 of section 88 of ica 1872 in lex revolution journal dr deepak srivastava presented a paper on clinical legal education in rural communities at the second asia cle conference organized by the bebsakal and chiang mai university thailand in may 2023 dr kaumudi challa co-authored a book chapter on the rights of unborn visavi abortion rights of women a juris jurisprudential dilemma dr navneet roy co-edited a book consumer protection laws in digital era Dr Kiran Kori edited a book on the plight of human rights in India published by the Gogia Law Agency Dr Avinash Samal presented a paper on accessing the functioning of panchayats in a federal polity with special focus on PRIs in Chhattisgarh Dr Balvinder Kaur presented a paper on clinical legal education in the Chiang Mai University in Thailand Dr Ankit Avasti co-edited a book on globalization law and community and also a book on rights nature and sustainability Dr Atul Jaibe authored a book revisiting juvenile justice in India a study on juvenile justice care and protection act of 2015 published by Rutledge Dr Parvesh Rajput presented a paper on intersectionality transparency and artificial intelligence a critical analysis of India's AI policy at Nottingham Trent University in UK there are many more as i said are present in the website for you to look now i turn back to students laurels students had an acad active academic year bringing laurels to the university team of avani bajpai mohsam nazir mr mukund sinha mr vinith jadhav mr sri charan ms vrinda chaturvedi were judged as runner up at the 13th oxford munro e prize media court competition in 2023 south asia rounds HNLU was one of the two teams of India to qualify for the world rounds. Team of Mr. Jaydeep, Ms. Aditi Ghosh, Ms. Megha Jain, Ms. Arushi Mittal won the best return submission award at the Ayan Fletcher International Insolvency Moot 2023 World Rounds. Ms. Megha Jain also backed the award for best mooter in the preliminary rounds. Team of Garu Arora, Mr. Pat Birla. Mr Ananya Badaya won the NHRC DNLU National Moot Court Competition 
organized by DNLU Jabalpur and also backed the best Appalan Memorial Award. A team of Ms. Shruti Walzade, Mr. Pranav Jain were adjudged as the best negotiating pair at the RGNUL National Sports and Entertainment Law Media Competition in 2023. Team of Ms. Shagun Kanodia, Ms. Arunima Sau qualified for the advanced rounds of the 15th Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Moot Court Competition 2023 held at United Nations headquarters in Geneva. Ms. Manya Manish and Mr. Nachiket Kaul were adjudged as the best presenter in the NLIU National Conference on Gender and Law for their paper presentation, Analysis of Female Genital Mutilation in the Context of Indian Legal Landscape. Ms. Kriti Ramudamu, LLM, was declared runners-up at the Master Conference of IPR 3O organized by IIT Karakpur. Team of Ritin Kujur and Amok Suresh won the badminton tournament at the Avahan Sports Fest organized by RMNLU Lucknow. Ms. Devishi Agarwal was a runner-up at the CNLU Vidikta 2.0 PIL drafting competition organized by CNLU Patna. Mr. Prabhu Gupta was awarded the first prize in the Nani A. Palkiwala Memorial Essay Writing Competition of 2023 organized by the West Bengal National University of Juridical Science in collaboration with Nani Palkiwala Memorial Trust. Mr. Mayank Kaushik and Ms. Kanishka Pratik won the National IP Essay Writing Competition of the Bennett University. Mr. Chirak Mothwani and Partha Birla secured the second position at the third freedom fighter, late Sri Prem Nidhi Agarwal Memorial Essay of GLS, GLC Mumbai. Ms. Sanika Yadubanshi won a gold medal in 10 meter air pistol junior women individual at the Chhattisgarh State Shooting Championship of Raipur in August 2023. Ms. Nandana Ms. Malvika, Ms. Kritika, and Ms. Sushasri, a couple of weeks back, weeks back, cleared the zonal round of the RBA Policy Challenge 2023 and qualified to participate in the national rounds in the coming January. I said it is again exhausting, and there are many more things which you can glean it from the website and the Gangaraj Asian posters which we keep putting for the students and the laurels, which again shows that HNLU has arrived in the scene, right? And this is uh, going to be the trend in the future. Now, lastly, I would like to share a few thoughts with the graduating batch. First and foremost, let me congratulate each and every one of you for choosing the noble path of law. The legal profession is not merely a career, but a calling, a commitment to justice, fairness, and the rule of law. As you step into this dynamic world, remember, that you are the architects of a just society and your role extends far beyond the courtroom. You are the custodians of rights, defenders of the vulnerable, and advocates for a better world. A law school is not just about textbooks and statutes. It is a holistic experience that molds your character, sharpens your intellect, and hones your advocacy skills. Cherish the friendships you forge, the late night debates you had, and the challenges that pushed you to your limits. These experiences will not only define your time in law school, but will also serve as the foundation upon which you build your legal career. Law is a living and breathing entity that evolves with society. It requires nimble minds capable of dissecting complex issues, understanding diverse perspectives, and crafting innovation solutions. Ethics and integrity must be the guiding stars of your legal journey. The trust bestowed upon you as a future legal professional is sacred. Uphold the higher standards of ethical conduct for the law loses its potency when wielded without integrity. Your reputation is your most valuable asset and it is earned through a consistent commitment to ethical practice. Remember that the law is not a solitary pursuit, its collaboration and teamwork integral part to this profession. Law is not about Individual brilliance is about working collectively to achieve justice. Respect the diversity of thought and backgrounds within your legal community, for it is the diversity that enriches the tapestry of legal discourse and fosters a more inclusive and equitable legal system. As you navigate through the intricacies of your practice, don't lose sight of the passion that led you to this path. The law has the power to effect positive change 
to right wrongs and to ensure a fair and just society. Let the passion be the driving force behind your endeavors and never forget the impact you can have on individuals, communities, and the world at large. In conclusion, I would like to remind you three simple yet profound lessons of life. First, hard work puts you in a place where good luck can find you. Hard work puts you in a place where good luck can find you. Secondly, two things will define you in your life. Your patience, then you have nothing. And your attitude, when you have everything. And finally, courage is being yourself every day when the world wants you to be someone else. Congratulations, and may your journey in the law be both fulfilling and impactful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now request Honorable Vice-Chancellor, sir, to kindly request the Honorable Chancellor to declare the convocation open. Honorable Chancellor, sir, may I have the honor to request you to declare the seventh convocation of Idetullah National Law University open. Open. Yeah. Honorable Chancellor, sir, this convocation of the Idetullah National Law University has been called to confer the degrees upon the candidates who, in examinations held for the purpose, have been found qualified for receiving their respective degrees. Sir, may I have the honor to bring before you the candidates who have qualified for the award of degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Laws, and BA LLB Honours for the administration of oath. Permitted. Let the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Laws, and BA LLB Honours stand forward. Honorable Chancellor, sir, please administer the oath to the candidates. Do you sincerely promise and declare that if admitted to the degree for which you are a candidate and for which you have been recommended, you will in your thoughts, words, and deeds conduct yourself as a worthy member of this university? Honorable Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to present unto you the candidates in person who have been examined and found qualified for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Hidayatullah National Law University, I admit the candidates in person and in absentia for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy of this university and charge them that in their life and conduct they prove themselves worthy of the same. We have the honor to request Honorable Mr. Justice Anirudh Bosji, Judge Supreme Court of India, visitor of HNLU and the chief guest of today's convocation ceremony to kindly come forward for awarding the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. May I also request Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to kindly come forward.
Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais for receiving their degrees. Anju Harbansh. Anubha Divedi. Sandeep Suman. <laughs> Honorable visitor, sir, thank you for awarding the degrees. May I request you to kindly take your seat. Honorable Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to present unto you the candidates in person and in absentia who have been examined and found qualified for the degree of Masters of Laws to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Hidayatullah National Law University, I admit the candidates in person and in absentia for the degree of Master of Law of this university and charge them that in their life and conduct they prove themselves worthy of the same. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Prashant Kumar Mishraji, Judge Supreme Court of India, guest of honor for today's convocation ceremony to kindly come forward for awarding the degree of Master of Laws. I also request Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir to join. May I now call upon the following candidates to come to the dais for receiving the degrees? Priyesh Pathak. Thanks a lot to the dignitaries for such a nice gesture. Next candidate who will be receiving the degree for Master of Laws is Prableen Kaur.
स्वप्निल अभिजीत कुमार अभिषेक कुशवाहा आकांक्षा गुलाटी अमन सिंह मीना एंजल सिंह अंजलि लाभ अंकित सिंह अनुषा कोठारी अनुषा शर्मा आरुषि मिंज ऐश्वर्या यादू दीपिका शर्मा दिलीप सोलंकी दिव्या बंजारा कल्याणी अपेक्षा कृति कुहू जगताप
राधिका महेश चौहान मेहर भटनागर मितुल सोनी नफीजा बेट नाजरीन तेजस्विनी प्रांशु पल्लव रिया भट्ट साधना साक्षी संयुक्ता सिंह शाहबाज अंजुम तान्या गुप्ता तरुण शर्मा वर्तिका लाल वैभव कृष्णा विजय सत्य कृष्णा विनायक
युक्ति चौधरी जीशान अहमद गौरी गुप्ता ऑनरेबल सर थैंक यू फॉर अवॉर्डिंग द डिग्रीज मे आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली टेक योर सीट Honorable Chancellor sir I have the honor to present unto you the candidates in person and in absentia who have been examined and found qualified for the degree of BA LLB honors to which I pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the Hidayatullah National Law University I admit the candidates in person and in absentia for the degree of ba llb honors to of this university and charge them that in their life and conduct they prove themselves worthy of the same may i now request honorable mr justice ramesh sinha ji chief justice of high court of chatisgarh and chancellor hnlu to kindly come forward for awarding the degrees of ba llb honors Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais for receiving their degrees. Arushi Kapoor, Vikrama Ditya. साक्षी झा आयुष अग्रवाल बार्बी भट्टाचार्य श्रेया अनोमित्रा देवनाथ दीक्षा सिंह कनिका मद्री
Kulatsia. Shruti Singh. Aditya Shukla. Abhay Jaiswal. Aditi Divan. Agrima Pandey. Akash Akshat Alice Anam Animesh Shukla Ankit Kumar Anshika Tiwari Anshu Sharma Anushruti Shah Apeksha Arna Broy Arsh Call Avi Avnish Prakash mm-hmm. 
Honorable sir, thank you for awarding the degrees. May I request you to kindly take your seat. No, no, no. I, I request Honorable Chancellor sir to please take his seat. Honorable Chancellor. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Sanjay K. Agrawal ji, High Court of, uh, Judge High Court of Chhattisgarh, to kindly come forward for awarding the degrees. Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais for receiving their degrees. Bhumika. Chanchal Jain Chhatresh Sahu Debojit Das Diksha Divesh Divyansh Tiwari Himanshu Chandrakar Imran Ahmad Khan Indra Kumar Lahoti Jitesh Ahuja Joseph Hilendra Kumar Kushi Sharma Kohinoor Sahu Komal Kumkum Thakur Lokansh Alma
महिमा नंदा मनस्वी अग्रवाल Honorable sir, thank you for awarding the degrees. May I request you to kindly take your seat. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice P. Sam Koshi ji, Judge High Court of Telangana, to kindly come forward for awarding the degrees. Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais for receiving their degrees. Mrigank. Navneet Singh. Nikhil Nimit Nitin Nitisha Agrawal Prakhar Chandrakar Pratik Kant Pratibha Eka Prerna Agrawal Priyal Jain Priyal Shukla Priyanka Raghavendra Singh Ruchit Thakur Honorable Sir Thank you for awarding the degrees. May I please request you to take your seat. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice G. Raghuramji, former director, National Judicial Academy, to kindly come forward for awarding the degrees.
Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais. Sakshi Rajavat. Sanjoli Verma Sarthak Saurabh Singh Shashank Agrawal Shitab Shivangi Tiwari Shivi Shreya Shubham Patel Shubhangi Sahu Sonal Shri Charan Surbhi Usha Kushi Lunavat Ritik Yadav Mridushi Honorable Sir, thank you for awarding the degrees. May I request you to kindly take your seat? May I now request Professor Dr. Ranbir Singh Ji, Pro Chancellor, IILM University, to kindly come forward for awarding the degrees. Now I call upon the following candidates to come to the dais. Vandita Mishra.
వానికేయి వంశిక వర్ష మాథుర్ వేద్ చంద్రాకర్ వేదాంత్ వీణ వినమ్ర విశాలక్షి వివేక్ రాజన్ యోగేంద్ర కుమార్ సాహు పలక్ సౌమ్య తేజస్వ రోహన్ ఆకాష్ సింగ్ జయదీప్ మాన్సి చంద్రాకర్ నమస్వి వినాయక్ విత్ దిస్ వీ కన్క్లూడ్ ది కన్ఫర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ డిగ్రీస్ ఫార్ బిఎల్ఎల్బి కోర్స్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ బోత్ ద డిగ్నటరీస్ to kindly take their seats may i now request vice chancellor sir to take the proceedings further 
I have the honor to request the chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Anirudha Bose, Judge, Supreme Court of India, and Honorable Visitor of HNLU, to kindly deliver the convocation address. Good afternoon. This convocation address is actually meant for the, all of you who've got their respective degrees today from this esteemed institution. But I, following the custom, I shall formally address the honorable dignitaries. My colleague, Justice Prashant Kumar Mishra in Supreme Court, Honorable Chancellor and Chief Justice of the High Court of Chhattisgarh, other Honorable Judges and Judges who have retired on and off the days. noted academicians and Professor Vivekanandan, Vice Chancellor of this university, members of the faculty and proud parents of all those students who have entered a new phase in their lives today. It is indeed an honor and pleasure to be among you today And particularly, as learned Vice Chancellor has said, this is an important day for holding the conv uh, convocation. This is the 118th birth anniversary of the great jurist after whom this institution has been named. And it's also a memorable day for all those who would be receiving or have received the degrees and equipped yourselves with the qualification for practicing the law or taking forward from where you stand. I congratulate all of you. But from here, go where is. Where does one go? It has become a tendency to measure, tendency to measure the success of an institution today by campus placement. This is possibly borrowed from this management and engineering institutions. And I shall start my address with an element of introspection. Because for law universities, this might be a wrong criteria to assess the quality. For this profession primarily evolved as a career with large degree of independence and autonomy, which one goes on achieving as one progresses in the career. Of course, career path of the legal profession or a legal professional has changed over the years. When I had joined the profession, that was mid-80s, 1985, it was practically a one-dimensional single path, court practice. Now we hear the term litigation lawyers. Few among us had joined the law firms, but those were again the family-run institutions or organizations. Today, apart from 
the litigation field professional law firms have emerged i am noticing in some cases fresh students coming out of the law schools okay i i studied in a college now it <laughs> these are called schools uh, they joined together and form a law firm which is a welcome practice then joining the judiciary is also a career option we have over 25000 judicial posts in different district judiciaries in india from where there's a thousand plus judges i mean posts in the high courts and to my mind the this is a path which is an excellent career option for all of you the other changes i see is a shift in gender profile of the legal community in fact which was uh, very prominent today so many young girls or ladies are coming into the field uh, one uh, analysis showed that in the district judiciary different parts of india around 36% little more than that are lady judges next comes law teaching this was never a career option when i was doing law because law used to be taught mostly by lawyers practicing lawyers on a part time basis very few law professors were there we have about 2000 law colleges in this country now with uh, 26 national law universities and joining the legal academics also open new doors for research which in turn tends to better understanding of the legislative process which is very important for us who are in in the thick of the profession legal community as a whole because seldom a empirical study has been done one example i'll give everyone says 198 section of indian penal code i guess uh, all of you know what it is now is misused but where is the study how many cases have been filed how many acquittal has taken place and how many cases could not be brought on the surface this is an example only having said all this ultimately majority of you will i guess join the law practice because litigation lawyers are the artillery and infantry of the legal community the foot soldiers carry the ak47 into the front in this core area also massive changes have taken place there are now about 15 lakh legal professionals in india and each year these 2000 law colleges generate possibly around 300 law graduates fresh each the field looks dense but considering our population of over 140 crores and a fast growing economy there is room for all 
Now, what makes a good lawyer? My own view is, as in the case of other professions, and more so in law, it is hard work, which the learned vice chancellor already indicated. I have seen many brilliant minds in the legal profession collapse. They can't bear the burden of the demand, burden or demand of this profession. But I have not seen a single lawyer who has worked very hard and failed. Everyone doesn't become the top ten. But hard-working lawyer always succeeds. And though each court tend to swarm with people in black robes, genuine clients' common complaint is that they are not getting a proper lawyer to represent their case. And this goes across the country. Other changes I see are mostly in the field of technology. Now computers and other digital instruments are replacing papers. The chamber system has practically disintegrated, which is a bad thing. And I would, to this address, request all the senior lawyers to revive the chamber, because they are the actual nitty-gritty of the link. It starts with the munshi, the clerk of the senior. He or she would have taken you to the department dealing with something called lawazima, ordinary, I mean, small defects which have to be, have to be cured, how to read or go through the records. Senior colleagues in the chamber would have taught you making list of dates and the senior will teach you how to find ratio in a judgment, how to formulate the grounds of appeal. So, while best way to learn swimming is, of course, jumping in the water, but uh, coach helps always. There has to be a Dronacharya who want to have a Arjun. My other advice is, would be for the future lawyers to go back to the basics of the statutes. Now, ADR, IPR, all these acronyms are very popular. But unless one knows contract, transfer of property, sale of goods act, evidence, it's difficult to reach a destination in the career. One has to read constitution article to article, front to back, back to front. Make that your habit. On your table, there should be one constitution. Bare constitution is okay. <coughs> Maxwell's interpretation of statute and salmon on jurisprudence. And whenever you will find free time, just flip through them. Then law is not a profession where you concentrate only on law. What's going on around you also impacts the uh, uh, the growth of the legal profession and 
couple of law books which are not text i feel are essential these would include the first attorney general of this country mr satalbad's my story then great uh, hidayatullah sahab my own boswell and the third one is roses in december by mc chagla these three books will give you a brief idea about how law evolved in late 40s early 50s 60s some training in district court is also necessary and then comes the complex areas one has to reconcile with computerization artificial intelligence and verify the results the human intelligence is still necessary in the legal profession i don't know about other profession so let artificial intelligence not be the dominant tool your own intelligence is more important hard thing is one has to really think of mother language as the medium of law we have 22 official languages and many more languages and dialects ultimately one will have to uh, evolve a system now artificial intelligence is being applied but there are also some shortcomings are there say for instance i tried myself granting leave the google translation is bengali all of you will understand because the actual word is same chuti chuti mil gaya lastly all of you must treat the chamber one senior counseling calcutta taught me not that i have followed <laughs> early in my career that your chamber be like a retail shop every day you have to open the shop whether you use that uh, incense sticks or not that's your choice in the morning if client doesn't come is very good then you read all these summon then <laughs> flip through them maxwell and if client comes it's better because then money will follow and in legal profession money is not always uh, in direct proportion with the hard work you do in a particular case you will do huge work it might not fetch you money but in some cases you put in little work there would be inflow but ultimately there is if you work hard there is always inflow and sorry sounding pedantic but it's a pleasure to see so many young uh, legal professionals who will dominate various high courts and district courts and supreme court in near and distant future wish all of you the best thank you honorable chancellor sir honorable visitor sir before proceeding with the next ceremony of the day i 
wish to put a small condition the condition is much much deserved by the candidates whom i am going to call upon the stage they are all gold medalists will be coming on the stage and a simple condition is that this entire hall should be filled with cheers and high decibel noise of claps if it is permitted may I please yes sir so now we arrive at one of the most eagerly awaited ceremony of the day that is awarding of the gold medals we request honorable mr justice anirudh bose ji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to llm candidates i request honorable vice chancellor sir to please join him so before calling the candidates if i can have a big round of applause thanks a lot i call upon the dais miss prableen kaur miss prableen has bagged three gold medals they are gold university gold medal for securing the first rank in llm shri jogiram agrawal son of late shri kripa ram agrawal gold medal for securing the highest cgpa by the female student of llm technology and law instituted by honorable mr justice sanjay k agrawal ji judge high court of chatisgarh and late kamal narayan sharma gold medal for securing the highest cgpa instituted by shrimati savita pathak ji next i call upon the dais mr swapnil thawane mr swapnil has bagged the shri virendra kumar agrawal son of late shri jogi ram agrawal gold medal for securing the highest cgpa by the male student of llm in intellectual property rights group instituted by honorable mr justice sanjay k agrawal ji judge high court of chatisgarh a big round of applause please <laughs> honorable sir thanks a lot for bestowing this honor upon the students i request you to kindly take your seat only sir visitor sir please take it now we have the honor to request honorable mr justice prashant kumar mishra ji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to the following students the next student who i'm calling upon the dais deserves a pause in the ceremony because she has won 12 gold medals and a big round of applause pause because i'll be taking at least 2 3 minutes to read all 12 medals then i'll call upon upon miss arushi kapoor on the stage her first medal is university gold medal for securing the first rank university gold medal in economics university gold medal in family law university gold medal in political science chatisgarh state bar council gold medal for securing the first rank shri vidyadhar mishra memorial gold medal for securing the first rank instituted by honorable mr justice prashant kumar mishra ji judge supreme court of india late shri deepak agrawal memorial gold medal for securing the highest marks in mercantile law instituted by honorable mr justice sanjay k agrawal ji high court judge high court of chatisgarh shri dayanand shukla gold medal 
for securing the highest marks in constitutional law and administrative law and Shrimati Shankri Shukla Medal for the female student securing highest marks in constitutional law and administrative law, both instituted by Dr. Nirmal Shuklaji, Senior Advocate High Court of Chhattisgarh. Dinesh Prasad Srivastava Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest CGPA and also the award for the female student for securing the highest CGPA. Both the medals instituted by Shri Ravindra Srivastavaji, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Last but not the least, late Kamal Narayan Sharma Gold Medal for securing the highest CGPA instituted by Srimati Savita Patakji. Best wishes and God bless Ms. Arushi Kapoor. Next, I would like to call upon the dais, another deserving candidate. He may not have got 12 medals, but he has got five gold medals. <laughs> Mr. Vikramaditya Devangan. The five gold medals are Chancellor's Gold Medal for the overall best performance, Dinesh Prashad Srivastava Memorial Gold Medal for the best, best graduating student, Dinesh Prashad Srivastava Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in all constitutional law papers. All these three medals are instituted by Shri Ravindra Srivastavaji, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Additionally, Vikramaditya has also bagged two gold medals, University Gold Medal in Jurisprudence and Legal Method, Sayyid Ishtiaq Hussain Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in criminal law, and professional ethics instituted by Shri S.K. Farhan Advocate, Raipur. Well done, Vikramaditya. A big round of applause, please. Honorable sir, thank you for bestowing this honor upon the students. I request you to kindly take care. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Ramesh Sinaji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to the following students. Miss Sakshi has bagged four gold medals. They are as follows. University Gold Medal in Sociology, Sayyid Vakil Ahmad, Rizvi Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in CPC, drafting, pleading and conveyancing, transfer of property and ADR, instituted by Shri Fazal Rizviji, Advocate Raipur, late Chitrakant Jaiswal, Memorial Gold Medal, for securing the highest marks in ADR, instituted by Shri Prashant Jaiswal, and late Shri Dinesh Chandra Tiwari Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in criminology, instituted by Shri Vibhash Chandra Tiwari. Well done, Sakshi.
Next, I have Mr. Ayush Agrawal. He has bagged two gold medals, namely, late Shrimati Shanti Devi Agrawal, Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in laws of taxation, instituted by Honorable Mr. Justice Sanjay K. Agrawal Ji, Judge High Court of Chhattisgarh, late K.P. Munshi Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in corporate law honours, instituted by Shri V.K. Munshi Advocate Ji, God bless you, Ayush. <laughs> Honorable sir, thank you for bestowing this honor upon the students. I request, request you to kindly take your seat. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Sanjay K. Agrawalji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to the following students. Miss Barbie Bhattacharya has bagged two gold medals, late Vignaharan Singh Advocate Kabir Dham gold medal for securing the highest marks in intellectual property rights honors group instituted by Dr. Raman Singh Ji, former Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, and late Nand Kishore Pandey, gold medal for securing the highest marks in professional ethics, instituted by Shri C.K. Pandey Ji. Miss Shreya has been awarded with two gold medals, University Gold Medal in International Trade Law Honours and late Vignaharan Singh Advocate Kabir Dham Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in international law, human rights law, environmental law, instituted by Dr. Raman Singh, former Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh. Best wishes, Shreya. Honorable sir, thank you for bestowing this honor upon the students. I request you to kindly take your seat. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice P. Sam Koshiji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to the following students. Ano Mitra Devnath, she is receiving a gold medal Titled as late Shri Panch Panchanan Bahaduri, Advocate, Gold Medal for Securing the Highest Marks in Civil Procedure Code, instituted by Shri Kishore Bahaduri Ji, Senior Advocate, High Court of Chhattisgarh. Miss Diksha Singh is receiving Dinesh Prashad Srivastava Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in law of torts instituted by Shri Ravindra Srivastava Ji, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Honorable sir, thank you for bestowing this honor upon the students. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice G. Raghuramji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medals to the following students.
मिस कनिका इज रिसीविंग लेट श्री हमीदुल्ला खान एक्स एम एल ए कबीर धाम गोल्ड मेडल फॉर सिक्योरिंग द हाइएस्ट मार्क्स इन इंडियन पिनल कोड इंस्टीट्यूटेड बाय श्रीमती सईदा शबनम अलवी Miss Madri is receiving University Gold Medal in Labor Law. Honorable Sir. Thank you for bestowing this honor upon the students. May I request you to kindly take your seat? May I now request Professor Dr. Ranbir Singh ji to kindly come forward for awarding the gold medal. Mr. Pulatsya Pandey, late Syed Afzal. Ahmed Rizvi gold medal for the best performance in criminal law and advocacy instituted by Shri Fazal Rizvi advocate Raipur Honorable sir Thanks a lot for bestowing this honor upon the students. I request you to kindly take your seat. May I now request Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir to award gold medal to Miss Shruti Singh. Shruti is getting a gold medal for Dinesh Prasad Shrivastava Memorial Gold Medal for securing the highest marks in property law instituted by Shri Ravindra Shrivastava. senior advocate supreme court of india thanks a lot sir i request you to please take your seat with this we move to the next segment of the today's ceremony that is the release of publications Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, we are now going to unveil the official publications of our university. May we request the dignitaries on the dais? to release hnlu journal of law and social sciences volume 9 now we move to the release of next official publication The next publication which we are going to release on today's occasion is HNLU Gazette. It is the inaugural newsletter of Idyatullah National University of Law. A big round of applause, please. <laughs> Respected dignitaries, I thank you for releasing the official publications of the university. honorable chancellor sir may i now have the honor to request you to declare the convocation dissolved
Please rise for the national anthem. I request the audience to be uh, standing. We'll be now starting with the reverse procession. I request the band to kindly play for the reverse procession. <laughs> <laughs> 